Well, hello there. Kamusta po kayo? How are you? And thank you for tuning in to another edition of Paul Guzman Presents Art. So we're just outside the Gallery Jones here in Vancouver, which is built on the ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And we're just about to go inside the gallery to have a look at a suite of oil paintings by Gary Pearson. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the video. So I'm just going to go and open the door and we're going to go and have a look at the show. So like I said, the show is by Gary Pearson and the show is called The Mystery Areas. And it's a suite of paintings, they're mostly oil paintings. And um, I'm going to go and give you a little bit of information about Gary Pearson, what I know anyways. I was fortunate enough to have a chat with one of the gallery directors. But before we go there, I think we'll do a little bit of a pan of the show. I'm just gonna walk over here. These are actually oil on paper works, which we're gonna go through a little bit later. And then as we go through, here is the rest of the show. So Gary Pearson, as I know it, I've been sort of following his work on and off for the past few years. And he is a painter who's based in the Okanagan region. I mentioned that earlier. And for those of you who, know, who don't know where the Okanagan is here in British Columbia, it's pretty much British Columbia's Napa Valley because uh, it is pretty much central to the uh, wine industry here in British Columbia. And there's also a lot of like fruits being raised there, like for example, um, plums and peaches and lots of um, really wonderful sort of like fruit uh, trees are being grown there. And um, the climate is actually very, very dry. It's almost like a desert area. And so that is where Gary Pearson lives. But he's also an avid traveler. And the one thing that I noticed is that we're just gonna go over to the uh, reception area because there's a really interesting um, press release over here, which I'm going to read to you as we walk through, okay? Because um, the press release, which I'm going to make available down in the description area, um, it's kind of like, it doesn't really describe the show, but what it does is it actually sort of gives you context in terms of his conceptual concerns. And then we're gonna go a little bit more into that later. I'm gonna go in here and then I'm gonna read a little bit of the press release. The title of the exhibition, The Mystery Areas, is drawn from a text the artist wrote a few years ago. The presentation paper in which this phrase is found grappled with the intersections of aesthetics anti-aesthetics, polycentric aesthetics, and post-aesthetics. The presentation for a curatorial project in which one focus was the paradoxes that occur when certain tropes of conventional aesthetics, forms, and critical judgments collide with the tropes of anti-aesthetics. So I'm going to stop there because the, the thing about it too is that like as a painter, like I'm not a painter, but Gary Pearson is a painter who specializes in oil uh, and enamel on canvas and paper. And um, a lot of things that a lot of painters tend to sort of like do is come up with, um, you know, uh, concepts regarding how they would um, sort of like attack a painting almost to the point of trying to figure out what should they paint, what are the issues that are very important to them. And that is really more the conceptual part of painting. But when you actually go into the actual um, work that has to be done when you're actually making paintings, you know, you have this sort of like sense of materiality that you have to grapple with. The, the texture of, let's say, the gesso on the canvas or applying oil paint versus enamel paint versus gouache and, and watercolor. Those are things that are kind of like materially 
sort of concerning you as you actually create the work, but the entire concept behind the work is something entirely different. And when you're looking at these paintings, there's always this sense of almost like a 20s or 30s, even modernist sort of feel to them. But I don't look at them in a sort of like a modernist uh, sensibility from, let's say, Bernard Buffet, I would say, and Max Beckman, um, those types of sort of like sensibilities where when you look at the paintings, when you look at the objects or even the people that are being painted in the paintings, there's always this sort of like black outline that's actually being sort of like um, used as a guideline for the entire sort of like sense of the paintings. And um, there's that sense about that sort of um, technique that's actually being uh, manifested in this entire show or even his entire sort of like a, um, working, working, um, working life as a painter. Because when you look at this, there's also this sense of the romantic about it. And if we dig deeper, you're gonna find that a lot of the, um, the works don't really sort of like deal with the aspect of life in the, um, in the uh, Okanagan area of British Columbia. These are basically paintings that are often sort of like based on like a European experience, even sort of like Catholic society type of thing. Like for example, this painting over here is called Arnoldstrasse, Hamburg, Al Altona. This one has a very sort of like, like a darker tone, but at the same time when you're looking at it in terms of like travel, Germany, Hamburg is actually more in the northern part of Germany than it is in the south. And I was informed that a lot of the travels that the artist has done in the past had pretty much concentrated on the southern European areas of Europe. For example, uh, France, Spain, mm, that sort of like area, maybe even Italy. But you can see from like the paintings and the topographies, you know, and there's always this sense of like the, the people that are actually put into the paintings. They're almost, they're almost abstracted, but at the same time, there's also a discerning of emotion with, with, with a lot of them. I mean, when you look at this painting, for example, let's see, These, this one is called Those Bums. When you look at, let's say, the faces of these people, there is actually sort of like a, an emotive quality to the paintings, almost like a, a little drinking scene in a, in a European bar somewhere. And there's this sort of like really, really strong sense of the oil paint that permeates through each and every one of these painters, or, or each, and, uh, each and every one of these paintings. And I was also mentioning how there's a certain level of sort of flatness in a lot of the paintings. Like, if we go to the paintings up close, there is some texturing in there because of the oil paint. But when you look at them from like um, afar, there seems to be this sort of like flattening sense that's almost very kind of like reminiscent of Japanese woodblock print making, you know, when the colors are very flat and uh, matte and they don't have any sort of like depth of field. And there's that sort of sense about these paintings of that um, maybe a, sort of like a comic sort of sensibility. Because I was thinking about these paintings earlier and the one thing that I was actually thinking about was that there's this sort of like New York Times caricature comic type of sensibility about the work. Um, if these were, let's say, in black and white, for example, let's go and look at this painting. You know, when you look at that in black and white, you can almost put a little caption that sort of like says, I, I don't know, something very political or something like that. So there's that sort of like, even a satirical quality about them, which is kind of like interesting because you almost just want to ascribe an experience to these paintings. And let's see now. And the one,
piece that I really like is, are these drawings over here, which I'm not sure if they're preparatory or anything like that, but um, they are actually finished works of art. And this one is, let's see now, called the Statue of the Archangel Gabriel. And then when you look at all three of them, it's a really beautiful treat to see all of them. It's like a little um, trifecta of um, delicate paintings on paper. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, and on that note, and um, I'm going to have the information about the gallery, the times that they're open, and also the press release that I um, had um, sort of like in, um, mentioned earlier about the aesthetics and the anti-aesthetics. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, feel free to like this video. You can also share it on your social media channels. And you can also subscribe to the channel. It's free for your enjoyment. Thank you again for your time. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. You have a great day and I hope art informs your life. And I'm just going to go and focus on this guy over here. And we're just going to go and end on that painting over here. Okay, goodbye.